Hey there, and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Brett Hawes, and we're back with another awesome episode. Uh, before I hop into today's show, um, just a little bit of housekeeping and an announcement. Um, I do have the uh, Digestive Health um, Practitioner Masterclass coming up on September 21st. Um, if you are a health professional who works with people in a clinical setting uh, in the nutrition, health coaching, dietitian, naturopathic space. Uh, you definitely want to check that out. Um, we've got a lot of people coming to the live event, which will be in Toronto. But if you're not in Toronto, we do have a bunch of people that are signing up uh, that are outside of Toronto and doing the online version. Okay, so uh, you can check more details uh, at holistichealthlive.com. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Uh, I probably won't be doing this again this year, and uh, it will happen again, um, hopefully January, February, somewhere around there. So holistichealthlive.com, you can check that out. Uh, now, on to today's show, um, I have the Mudman, affectionately known as the Mudman. His name is Marc St. Ange. He's the CEO and formulator of uh, New Water, or Black Oxygen Organics. And today we talk about fulvic and humic acids, which is a topic that is quite close to my heart, um, something that I've been interested in for many years now. And I've sort of cycled through different products as they've come and gone off the market. And um, when I first came across this, I obviously was super excited for a number of reasons. Uh, one, um, if you don't know what fulvic and humic acids are, um, you should definitely tune into today's episode um, fulvic acid, humic acid, and trace minerals are a vital part of overall health, and I feel the missing link for a lot of um, what we're doing. And the reason why is people are largely trace mineral deficient because the soil is trace mineral deficient. All right, so the soil is deficient, the plants are deficient, and therefore the animals and people that eat those plants are also deficient, and that has a pretty big cascade effect in terms of our health consequences. Um, listen to the show and you'll hear why, but I want to whet your appetite with the following and consider this. Fulvic and humic acids uh, increase all nutrient absorption across the board. And this happens at the cellular level, right? So they enhance cellular uptake of nutrients and drag in 60 times their own weight of nutrition into the cell. They will then take 60 times its own weight of toxins out of the cell. And what fulvic does is it pulls water into the cell so you get cellular hydration and then splits that water into hydrogen and oxygen. So you get cellular oxygenation and the hydrogen will actually shift the pH as well. So very, very powerful stuff that really works with anything else that you're doing. Okay, so no matter what you're doing, no matter what health regime you're doing, um, there's very, very few uh, drug interactions, so it's super safe. And um, yeah, it's it's something that I've been using for a really long time, both on myself and in my practice. Now, as you know, uh, we don't have any advertising on the show, um, but today is one of the ways that you can help me and you can help yourself. So if you click on the link in the show notes, um, you can also visit uh, the website, right? So just click on the show notes and um, you can visit the store and pick yourself up uh, some product, all right? So Personally, I like the drops, right? So five mils a day. Now you can do that one to three times a day. Uh, the sachets are also quite convenient. Um, you can throw them in your, your handbag or your bag or whatever. Um, and yeah, you'll be helping yourself. You'll be helping me. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, just those two links again, holistichealthlive.com, and you can click the show notes for um, product, right? So for new water product. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. As always, if you enjoy the show, please consider subscribing, reviewing, and uh, sharing this with your friends, family, and community. So I bring you today Mark St. Ange, a.k.a. The Mud Man. Hey, Mark. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me today and uh, getting stuck in the mud, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> um, so, uh, wow, well, I don't know where we're going to start or where we're going to land up today, but uh, I think you and I have both have a lot of, you know, just having gotten to know you over the last while, uh, I think we've got a lot of parallels, a lot of similarities in terms of our journey. 
Um, and also we've, you know, you a lot more than myself, uh, you know, been working with uh, fulvic acids, humic acids, trace minerals and stuff like that, which is why you uh, came to be known as the mud man. Um, so perhaps let's just sort of peel things right back. And uh, I want to ask you, like, give us a little bit of a sense of your background, because I understand it's quite varied and you've been doing this for a really long time. So just sort of sketch the, uh, the path to get you uh, where you are today, if you can. Sure, sure. that would be, uh, be great. Um, well, it, it, it started very, very young. I, I remember, you know, I was eight, nine years old. My mother was always, always intrigued about taking care of her skin. And she used to go to the grocery store and buy exotic fruits and peel them and, and smash them up and put them on her face to see what it would do. And I, so from a young age, I always was uh, fixated to taking care of my skin. I've always had a day cream, uh, even during my uh, teenage years, uh, the acne, and I, I was treated by my mother and, you know, camphor oil and lotions and, you know. So for me, taking care of myself uh, was a way of living from an early age. So when I, when I got involved in my mother's aesthetic business, she had two schools and, uh, I'm not going to hide it. The first, the first thing was because it was a woman industry and I liked women. But the second thing was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, something that I believed in. And so I, I started studying aesthetics and skincare, studied the skin and, uh, moved to Ottawa to uh, really, uh, ramp up her business here in Ottawa because we, we come from Sudbury and, um, my job was to promote it. And I've always looked at you know, my mother would say, you know, beauty's only skin deep, but it's more than the face. And so we have to one day take care of the whole body. And that was in the mid 80s, 82, 83. So during that journey, he was always looking for ways to start promoting the body treatments. And in those days, the spa, the word spa did not even exist. You know, we, we, we were really innovative in saying, well, we got to treat skin problems, but on the whole body. So my job was to find uh, products or different ways of treatments to bring in a, a, a school protocol, a school curriculum for body treatments. That was my first job. And so I got involved in, in a lot of uh, uh, the seaweeds and the clays and the muds. And, uh, and, and that's where we dipped and dab in these types of product because that's the first thing we used to do with body treatments is do body wraps. So we got involved in seaweeds uh, from, uh, from France and we started using that. And then we went to a trade show and this lady was talking about nutritional re-education. And we're saying, well, yeah, if you're fat and have cellulite and you have uh, muscular skeletal problems, it's got to be because what you eat. And so we invited this lady over to the school and she gave a conference to the students and her husband was an orthotherapist and, hmm. uh, started talking to me about orthotherapy and I said, wow, this is kind of cool. This is maybe something I would get involved. So he says, and at the same time, uh, in, in those days, um, I wasn't uh, very healthy, even though my mother thought I was healthy. I used to drink two to three liters of milk a day and I was clogged. Uh, mucus. Oh yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I had allergies, skin problems. And this, this orthotherapist says, you know, your problem he says, you're a little calf and you, eat too, and you drink too much uh, milk because milk is for cows and it's to help grow, grow hooves and horns. And I looked at it and said, what the hell are you talking about? I was brought up with milk. And that's the only thing we had in our house. And I, he said, if you want to start breathing, come and see me. So I actually went to his clinic in, in Drummondville, Quebec. And uh, I spent a week there. And uh, he put me on this detox cleanse. And the only thing I had to eat was... was uh, was soup, you know, watered down soup and, and water. And uh, then I went through colonics. He gave me three little pills and it made me go to the washroom. Uh, and, you know, within seven, uh, five, seven days, I was breathing. I couldn't believe it. This wow. is kind of cool. Yeah. And, and at the same time, I was going around his clinic and I was seeing a therapist uh, doing these mobilization and massage. I said, man, this is something. I still have the goosebumps when I talk about it. And, and this is something I want to do. Well, he says, yeah, it's easy. Take my course because he had an orthotherapy course. So I trucked down from Ottawa to Drummondville for three years and I took his program. Uh, and then when I graduated, I brought that into Ontario, into my mother's school. Uh, I paid into his program as a franchisee and I started teaching orthotherapy in Ontario. And that developed into uh, the whole orthotherapy college that I, that I had for many, many years. And uh, I was the first orthotherapist in Ontario. Now, oh. back in the day, we were alternative medicine. 
So we weren't considered recognized, right? So we were kind of under the radar and I was like really ramping up like 50, 60 patients a day. I had three therapists working for me and the chiropractor and the medicine on the same mall were saying, what the hell is he doing? And uh, when they started investigating, they, they, uh, they got jealous and they, uh, they, they called uh, uh, the RCMP and they said I was practicing illegal medicine. So they came in and they took pictures, they seized all my files, they shut me down and I was charged for practicing illegal medicine in 19, wow. uh, 1989. Yeah, it was kind of kind of weird. But anyways, all that to say that I, I still believed in, in the training as an orthotherapist, and I set up myself uh, to, to get it recognized. So, you know, uh, founding uh, a professional association, working with the RMT College to get us approved, working with the governments to get us approved, uh, still training people, move my business to Hall, just outside of, of Ottawa, so that I can continue training because I was not allowed in Ontario. All this because I believed in orthotherapy and I believed in, in the way this holistic approach was treating people and healing people. But at the same time, we were always looking for innovative products in the aesthetic world and in the body treatments. And so every summer we'd shut down and we travel the European countries, you know, it was nice. So you take a holiday at the same time you visit different, uh, you know, essential oil suppliers, herbal uh, remedy suppliers. And, and that year uh, I was meeting up with a, a Dr. Ehrlich in Germany, in Bad Wirzach, in, the, in Sonnenberg, in the northern part of Germany. And they had a sanatorium in which they treated people for muscular skeletal problems, but they treated it with this black mud. Hmm. So I went there. And I, and I met this doctor and I, and I spent a week there and, and seeing how they were treating. I was actually a, a patient. Uh, I took full submersible mud baths, you know, with the, with the, the cap on it and, the, and a strap around your, your, your thoracic area with cold water because you were submerged in this 140 degree mud and you'd sweat really, really, really a, a lot. And, uh, and then you had a massage and you go into saunas. You know, in, in other words, like you felt like a million bucks after that. And I said, Jesus, I'm really impressed about that. So I, 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 I entered into an agreement with that company and started importing the mud. And then um, I was putting this mud in a Ziploc bag and I was re giving this to my patients. So on a Monday morning, if I had a patient coming in, uh, I would give him a, a Ziploc bags with two baths. So I'd say, you take one on Monday night, you take one another on Tuesday night. And I'll see you back here on Wednesday because I'd see them three times a week. Right. Well, sure enough, after two or three baths, these people were starting to say, wow, this is fantastic. You know, I didn't believe in this black mud, but I, when I take the bath, uh, I feel great. I've got no more pain. Can I get another bag to give to my aunt or my uncle or, or my aunt, that, you know, that has back problems? So it was just like uh, uh, an exponential growth, which I wasn't even aware of, but I was doing almost 500 of these Ziploc bags in my garage. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> you know, it became a, a whole business uh, uh, from, 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 from that concept of just putting it into a Ziploc bag. Wow. And, wow. Uh, and so, so that, that's where I got the idea of saying, well, if this could be a great business to bottle it. And, and you know, coming from Subray uh, and, and uh, playing in bogs when I was young, um, and, you know, knee high in mind. So we got the same stuff here in Canada. So, so let's do some research. So I just started doing research in different bogs and peatlands across Canada, especially in my native uh, home and, and up to Rivière du Loup, where there was huge peat bogs in Rivière du Loup. Uh, and, I, and, I, uh, and I brought it to a lab and I asked them to analyze for the humic acid content because that's the ingredient that I was looking at uh, before. That's how I was trained in humic acid. And uh, just settled on uh, two, three bogs, but the one here in Kassman, uh was the closest to where I was in Ottawa. And, uh, and it contained 36% humic acid, which is like, wow, this is kind of cool because mm -hmm. the German mud was always 8 or 10%. Right. And so I went back to Germany with my mud. I had a bucket of mud uh, and uh, showed them our, our peat. And uh, they, uh, they, they fell in love with ours and they started buying mud from me. And wow. so it... The, the, yeah, everything flipped over. Right? The business turned around, and I started selling that to them. 
and they were buying so much that I had enough money to say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to start my own. I'm going to found my own company. I'm going to start bottling mud. And uh, that's where the challenges start. You know, when, when you yeah. want to bottle mud, you kind of look yeah. a little bit crazy. And that's where my, my name comes from because when I moved to Castleman, there was 1200 people in that village and I had to go through the, the, the village committee. So there was like, uh, uh, the mayor and all the counselors, and there was like all like you. I felt like I was in court <laughs> when I go there uh, one evening to present my my business plan of bottling mud, and taking mud from their area, and you know building a build building and doing that. And uh, there was six people on the committee. Two people loved my idea: the mayor and a rich businessman in Castleman. These two believed in my project, and the mayor the mayor really really helped me. Uh, he got me the land. He got me the building. They financed it. It was like a Castman business development. I, they were building it for me. I had free free taxes, and but I had to go get a loan. I had to go get a seventy five thousand dollar loan for the whole project. And when I went to the national bank in the, in Castman, my, my my business plan and my project, uh, the manager said, "What do you want to do?" And I said, "Well, I want to bottle mud." And as soon as I said that, she started laughing. And, and, and couldn't stop laughing. So I said, I got up and I left. And I said, I never got in. I never went back to the bank. I never got financing. And it was financed by my father-in-law who, who gave me the opportunity to become an orthotherapist and my mother. And, uh, and so in 1992, I bought the land. 1994, we were built and we were actually officially started. And uh, that first year with a bucket of mud, and uh, a bottle of, of bottled mud with pine essential oil. We did half a million dollars of sales. Wow! And Incredible. Did, yeah. So so that that in the in, in that's the story. From there, we just you know continued uh, increasing our business with the spa industry growing all over Canada and the United States, and then expanded in the world. We exported in seventeen countries. Our biggest market was the Asian market, and then uh, we uh, we. We continued with over 89 different products and different recipes. And uh, so we treated everything that uh, imaginable in the holistic health from skin problems to inflammation to, uh, to uh, you know, all, uh, you know, not, not saying that I, I cured a lot of diseases, but this product was uh, amazing in the spa industry. When you had a therapist that believed in it and used it, mm -hmm. they had great results. Yeah. Well, um, so I just want to circle back to one thing just uh, so that I'm clear because I don't, an orthotherapist, I mean, are, are we talking about um, doing manual manipulation as well as working internally? Is that, is that really a good sort of definition yes. or? Yeah. Yes. So holistically, orthotherapy is three phases. So it's a three year program. The first year is massage. So you're actually becoming a massage therapist. Because the saying is, you can't bend steel without heating it up. It's the same thing with muscles mm -hmm. and bones. You can't, you can't bend it. You can't, you can't manipulate it if you don't warm them up. So massage was the first thing that you learned. So I became a, a Swedish massage professional. And, and, then, and then we started to dab into aromatherapy and herbology. But the second year, we specialized in aromatherapy and herbology. And then it's a technique called kinesiotherapy, which is movements. Okay. You know, kinesi means movement. So kinesiology is the study of movement. We were treating with movement. So we had active, passive, and contrary movements to muscle structures that we learned to rehabilitate a joint. Interesting. The third year, uh, we, did, uh, we, did, we specialized in traction. So we had a, a, an elongation traction with, you know, we, with all of oh, Okay. Yeah, so we did that. And then we specialized in uh, uh, Reiki, uh, trigger points, uh, emotional issues triggered to mind, body, and soul. We went into the, 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 the process of everything's correlated to energy. Uh, we did mineral, trace mineral uh, training, uh, specialized techniques uh, from different people all over the world. Uh, and, uh, and that's the orthotherapy training. So, wow. And then, of course, we had to do a thesis, improve the thesis in front of everybody. And then you become part of the professional association. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. And then it was recognized and, uh, you know, even uh, insurance started paying our, our, our treatments. So Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of listeners um, will probably be very interested in that uh, as, a, as a program or training because it sort of fits well, in line. The school with still exists. The, yeah. The okay. School. Great. Great. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, very much in line with what a lot of our listeners are, are already into. Um, obviously, you know, the title of the show is Holistic Health Masterclass. So go figure. Um, yeah. But let's let's sort of uh, move forward a little bit because, um, you know, I want to sort of get into a bit of the nuance here and perhaps a little bit more of the sciencey kind of stuff. Right. So, you know, you mentioned that um, this this the products being exported um, globally, but being used in more of a spa setting. So, you know, let, let's um, first of all, I think what would be good and useful for our audience is to define, um, you know, when you say product, like we're talking about mud, but let's sort of go a little bit deeper, right? So what is, you know, when we talk about fulvic acids, humic acids, um, trace minerals, perhaps sort of like give us uh, some definitions there, you know, what is fulvic acid? What is humic acid? Um, what, you know, where do they come from? Uh, and we go sort of go from there. So, so the product comes from peat. Uh, and, you know, the slang word is a swamp. Uh, wetland is another word. Uh, those, those are, are uh, areas that uh, is comprised of plant uh, decomposing through thousands of years. So a peat bog is actually over 1,500 plants. And uh, they took, you know, the plants while they were living, took the energy from the sun and took the energy from the soil and the organic the inorganic structures, and they turned that into phytohormones. And, and in the fall, they die and they decompose. And that, that landfill uh, fills up. And, uh, and, it, and it creates quite a bit of, uh, of peat. Now, the, the, the peat bog here in Casamon or in the, uh, in the Ottawa Valley is very, very large. It's 45, 000, 45 kilometers long by 25 kilometers wide. It's very, oh, wow. Very big. Oh, wow. That's huge. Yeah. Very big. The Ottawa Valley is very rich in black earth because uh, farmers here have two or three crops and they're very rich. And that's one of the reasons why is because of the black earth. So peat bog, when they decompose, they go through a, a humification process. And this humification process, uh, through thousands of years, this is not just two or three years of composting, uh, creates a bio, bioavailable uh, biochemical compound called humic acid. And a lot of people say, oh, it's acid, it's dangerous, it's, it's, uh, the pH is very low, blah, 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 it's not good for you. So... But, but when you do research on humic acid, it's actually very alkaline. Mm -hmm. And this humification process uh, creates a, a, a black uh, product, which is carbon, uh, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then in that particular humic acid, there's a, there's a formation of fulvic also. So you, can't, you can separate fulvic from humic, uh, but when you do, you use a lot of chemicals to separate it. So it defeats the purpose of being holistic and organic. So I don't do that. Interesting. So, so quick question. So fulvic and humic acids are normally found together in nature. Is that right? Yeah. yeah and, 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 and would you say historically, I mean, I, we'll get back to the, to the sort of um, peat bog in a second. But historically, as, as far as I understand, fulvic and humic acids were relatively abundant um, pre-industrialized farming, right? Like it, it just just around because everything would decompose naturally year year in year out, and and it's my understanding that with modern farming techniques and what we have done in the industrial uh, sort of age, uh, we've really lost a lot of the fulvic humic acids. Is that right? We did, we did, and and because of the pesticides and fertilizers in our soils, in you know a hundred years ago before pesticides and fertilizers, how would they? enrich their soil they would enrich it with peat bogs and peat mm -hmm. moss okay. the degradation of plants right so yeah. so and then you know pesticides how they were how they were managing the the pests were through essential oils and the herbal remedies i mean that still exists today if you use yeah, that's uh, biodynamic farming right yeah. yeah i mean they had no problems then uh you know they were just sold on pesticides but rosemary oil and eucalyptus oil and you know all these uh essential oils sprayed on the plant not only was it you know repel insects but it was also uh help the photosynthesis because it would it would uh, remove the dust off the plant so they were able to get more rays of the sun everything was pristine everything was 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 you know uh, and when, when men came in with pesticides i think that's where <laughs> well yeah because I mean, the, the, the pesticides basically kill all of the microorganisms in the soil that are doing the humification and decomp decomposition right 
So well, that's why you have to put fertilizers because you're taking away what's in the, on the earth. So yeah, so uh, it was very readily available. You know, in in the, in the European countries, these, these peat bogs um, were also used for fossil fuel. They used to heat their homes. So what they did is dig trenches and get rid of the water. They dry the peat and they put it in the blocks and they put it in stoves to heat their homes. That, that's one of the reasons why the Germans were in, interested in mine because it was it was uh, pristine. It was pure. It wasn't been used and abused. Like you go to the Black Forest now, or even in Nidhating in in Austria, you can't exploit. You can't extract uh, mud out of the bogs anymore because there's none left. They they've dug trenches and and ditches where there's no more bogs. So so they they did not help the replenishing of of that environment. So uh, they can't use it anymore. Yeah, well, I, I would assume it's essentially a, a question of, you know, much like a lot of environmental issues, taking more than you can regenerate, you, you know, it's the sort of like net loss um, over many decades, right? Um, so, so I want to just bring us back on point to humification and these fulvic, uh, you know, fulvic and humic acids. Um, so, so we're talking about plants that have essentially decomposed year in, year out over many thousands of years. Uh, we've got all of the trace elements. We've got fulvic and humic acids. Uh, one question I had for you was, uh, this is just something I thought about and perhaps you have an answer, is would we also find the the sort of uh, phytochemicals and phytonutrients in there? You know how, how herbs have their medicinal properties. Have these also been sort of distilled down into into the uh, through the humification process? And then second question would be, I would assume a lot of those plants don't exist anymore as well, right? Um, Absolutely, yes. Um, when plants live, you have the, the gender, you have a female plant and a male plant. So they create the same, same type of hormones in their bodies or in their, their living species. So they, when they die, these what they call phyto or fetal hormones uh, are in this bog. And it's one of the, the benefits of eating or applying mud on your skin is that they contain these phyto hormones and it regulates your own normal hormones. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. You have, you know, even like these hormones and these biochemical compounds uh, create natural penicillin, for example. Like we've, we've written penicillin on an ingredient list at one point. People just shy away, say, oh, my God, I'm allergic to penicillin. But we're always talking about uh, natural antibiotics created by plants through their hormonal structure and their phytohormones. And huh. so... Uh, natural antibiotics exist in in peat, so so you know if you have a, a, a viral infection or even a bacterial infection, you can actually eat peat or drink fulvic uh, to help the immune system fight off the bacteria. Wow, wow, that's kind of crazy. Phytohormones are an important component of fulvic and humic, and and it's all because of the the plants. It's it's a really an organic world. Uh, and those plants give us the tools to, to use for uh, herbal remedies. So if you look at different plants, at 1,500 plants, and you look at the herbal remedy of each plant, they're still in the peat. So you're actually a herbalist when you, when you actually use fulvic or use humic because they're all there. I would assume then, obviously, they're not in like some crazy high concentration, right? I mean, we're talking really about trace, uh, tra trace elements. Always in trace. Yeah, and which I think is, is useful for people because there's, you know, when you hear about phytohormones, you know, just the word hormones coming yeah. in from the external, I think a lot of people are still quite afraid of that, you know, like, is it going to have negative side effects? Is it going to disrupt my hormones? And, and from what I'm understanding, probably not. No, absolutely not. And, that, and because it's homeopathic in, 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 in right. the sense of the world, uh, it doesn't counter affect the medication or the, you know, the drugs that the doctors prescribed you. So a lot of people say, well, should, should I consult a doctor if I'm going to start using fulvic? Well, you can, but it's not going to affect the effect of the medication you're taking. But it will, mm -hmm. it will strengthen your system. So eventually you might want to go back to your doctor and maybe the milligrams or the concentration of the medication will be reduced. And I've had that a lot in my practice, in the years of practice, where, for example, uh, somebody had a high blood pressure problem. Like 40-year-old, they start having high blood pressure. They go see the doctor, they get rat poison, they start taking the rat poison, the blood pressure goes down. Um, and, you know, two, three years later, uh, they haven't really uh, 
regulated or solve the initial issue, which was the pancreas. <laughs> you know, eating too much sugar mm -hmm. creates pancreatic problems, increases the high blood pressure. So the doctor gave uh, a symptomatic solution to the high blood pressure. Now they have a, a problem with the pancreas. They're diabetic. So now you're treating diabetics. That's a classic. And then so when 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 these guys would come and see me, I would say, okay, you're going to start taking uh, two or three mud baths and, and, and taking supplementation. They would see uh, a change in their blood pressure. Hmm. And, and sometimes even, you know, taking insulin or, or the diabetes disappeared. And so they go back to their doctor and they take a blood pressure and they say, well, your blood pressure is stable. And then they would try to reduce the Coumadin, the, the prescribed drugs. And I've seen guys, uh, and, and I'm one of them, uh, uh, where you actually don't take drugs anymore. Wow. Wow. And yeah, I mean, that's obviously appealing for a lot of people, you know, I mean, just in the world that we live in, I'm talking about you and I and many listeners. Um, yeah, you know, there's tons of people that are just really sick and tired of taking meds for side effects for all many, many, many other reasons, you know, so I think that they are, you know, this is why the field of natural medicine, holistic health, and so on has really exploded because people are sick and tired of taking drugs day in, day out, dealing with the side effects, the costs, and everything else, you know, the collateral damage that comes with that over many decades of taking these meds. So I think, yeah, that's that's definitely quite appealing to people. Um, so let's just, I, I want to sort of start with um, the, the external sort of application. Uh, because, yes. you know, you talk about mud baths and you talk about masks, right? And I think for a lot of people out there, we might still view that as very cosmetic. You, you know, simply I'm going to do a clay mask so that my skin looks nice and clear. And, and obviously that's one of the benefits. But perhaps you can sort of uh, elaborate on that a little bit more. Why would, want to, why would people want to do that? Uh, to do a wrap? Like the yeah, so body wrap or, or the clay mask. I mean, I, again, I'm not sure exactly what your applications look like. So perhaps uh, share, us, share with us um, how you would do that and what the benefits are. Well, the, the, the first products that I produced was a body wrap and a mud bath. So the body wrap was a, just, a, you know, just a, a, a plain mud. It was a paste of mud uh, that you would apply directly on the skin. And a very thin layer just covered with your... Uh, with your your either your we used to use spatulas and then gloves and then hands and, and then wrap it up in plastic and uh, then you will lay in that for 20 minutes that was the easiest uh application is, is this full body like head to toe wow okay yeah, full body. uh and so so and then wrapping it up uh, you'd cut the oxygen because when you cut the oxygen uh the uh the the, the peat has the ability to go into the subcutaneous tissue uh, by a by a process called osmosis, right? But you had to cut the oxygen, so you had to bring up the body temperature, the, the the epidermis and the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue, where the bloodstream is, and it goes right down into the subcutaneous tissue, and many things occur, many biochemical reactions occur when that happens. It takes about ten minutes for it to 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 happen. It takes you know ten minutes to absorb, bring the body temperature up. So of course in a spa you'd massage them, you'd go into the sauna, maybe take a bath. They were, you know, the skin was prepared, the pores were open, put the mud on, wrap them up, suck it up, put a, a blanket or a toque over their face to push the heat back in. One of the first things that happens when you did the mud wrap was to increase body temperature. So at the same time, when you're laying down, relaxing, listening to nice music, you're raising metabolism. So if you're not you know, doing anything, you're not eating, you, your body would go into the stored fat cells and burn them off. So first thing was weight loss. So we started yeah. selling weight loss. Uh, when they were losing weight, they started getting less pain. Uh, you know, uh, bone bone uh, density improved because they they weren't leaching uh, in their bone marrow to uh, bring their body down to an alkaline state. We were alkalizing their body at the same time, and so and then it you know the skin. I mean the skin. Let's talk about the skin. They had skin abrasions, scars, uh, psoriasis, eczema, and why wrapping them, saying, "Oh Jesus, that's all disappeared." And so it was all trial and error, but. Uh, and then I, you know, I went to Austria and I met Dr. Stober, who actually wrote the first book on the science of humic and fulvic, and and created a book called uh, 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 
the talking about the five benefits and one of them was cell re regenerator. And so, so when we, when we saw that, we started talking about uh, patients coming in with pain and inflammation, but they had you know, psoriasis and eczema and we treated that at the same time and with tremendous results. And then of course, in, in aesthetics, we were always looking for an acne, uh, prone product and this was astringent very firming so when we apply it on the skin it has the ability to draw out impurities so for acne prone skins or blackheads it was just amazing estheticians were going crazy wow. over it <laughs> so, so we had that facial mask that you let dry and you had that non-surgical facelift so then we created a non-surgical facelift mask which was like very popular because they would use that maybe an hour before going out Nice skin, nice, nice reddish skin, put makeup on, you look like a million bucks, right? And you do the same thing with breasts and hips, you know, non-surgical face, facelift, you have the same thing with breasts. So we had different types of, uh, of, of uh, wrap applications and the only, what we did with the peat is we've added aromatherapy. We added essential oils and herbal, herbal things in the wrap for different purposes. Like for example, cellulite, we put a, we put wintergreen, uh, red pepper extract, rosemary, uh, all these types of plants that activate the circulation, increase body temperature and heat locally so that we have better absorption. Hmm. We had one for relaxation with, with lavender. Uh, we had one for, uh, for cuprose and, and we had coffee extract and orange essential oil and, and uh, bilberry uh, seeds to, to increase the microcirculation for cuprose-based problems. All in all, it was always based on this peak application of the five benefits that we've always known, which was anti-inflammatory, cell regenerating, hormone balancing, chelator of heavy metal, and uh, adaptogen. And then at the same time, in the aesthetic, where we added the astringent and the firming part of, of, of the peak. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that sounds pretty comprehensive. Um, and, and I totally get it. I mean, as someone who's also been doing this for a while, I can, I, I, I get it, um, you know, using the different types of essential oils for their own benefits, together with the sort of fulvic humic um, and trace minerals as the sort of base, right, as the foundation. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so let's talk. Um, so obviously, that's the sort of external application. But um, you know, I've been uh, fortunate enough now to have been taking, you know, fulvic and humic acids internally for probably the better part of 15 years now, maybe a little bit more, if I'm not mistaken. And I've sort of like come across different products, you know, here and there, and some have disappeared and some, you know, have their sort of subtle differences. Um, we, we won't get into government regulations uh, at this moment in time. Yeah, because they're so complex, you know, it's hard to give them uh, a, a natural product number because what does it do? You know, we want to know one or two things and what's in it. You know, well, we're not really sure because there's so many things in it. And so anyway, so I know that that's one of the reasons why a couple of them have disappeared. But you said it earlier, and I just I want to sort of reiterate this point that, um, you know, most fulvic and humic acid products out there or extractions, if you will, are, you said around eight to 10%, right? I've, I've heard seven to 11%, give or take, yeah. somewhere around there. And um, what you found in the Ottawa Valley is, is 36%, which, which is pretty significant, right? So um, what I've been taking of yours r right now has really been the drops. Um, and I quite enjoy them. I've, I've been doing them probably at least, uh, I would say twice a day, um, you know, give or take. And, uh, I, I do notice the concentration, right? It's not super thick, but it's black and you can kind of taste it's real earthy. You know, it's got that nice earthy, clean taste to it, um, which I love personally. But, you know, as someone who's also researched fulvic and humic acids, um, I understand what the big sort of benefits are. I mean, we're sitting on a 70-page, 80-page document. Um, I've, there's tons of studies out there just in terms of the widespread benefits. But with regards to the internal application, right? So actually drinking fulvic and humic acids, um, maybe let's just start unpacking that a little bit, right? So what are the sort of main benefits? And then we can sort of talk about some of those as, as we move forward in our conversation. Yeah, the main benefit is the mineral content, of course, because it has the, you know, the 70 minerals that are in their periodic table. Um, and, and again, the very little in macro elements, but a lot of them in trace minerals and the very 
micronic trace minerals like 0.001 ppm for iodine, for example, and mercury. People say, oh, you know, mercury is, uh, you know, toxic, toxicity. Arsenic and so on, yeah. Yeah, but we do need, you know, mercury in our body. It's a component that we are. We're made of that certain substance, but in a very minute uh, property. So, so um, fulvic is organic. If you go back to the plant world, it's, it's an organic structure. The, our peat process is our peat not processed, but our peat is organic. It doesn't come from Leonardites, it doesn't come from shales, or it doesn't come from the shilajits from the Himalayans, which are fossilized. When you're fossilizing, you're creating a lot of heavy metals, depending on the areas in which you extract the fossils. Oh, that's very tell me more about that, because I know a lot of listeners, um, and students for that matter, sh shilajits is very, very popular. So what, what can you just explain that a little bit more? Because you kind of rung a couple bells there, um, which I'm sure people would love to hear more. Well, the shilajits are creating a, what they call a carbon 60. You know, it's a you know, big thing now, but it still comes from uh, fossilized rocks formation you know, up in the Himalayan. So uh, when you always look at fossilization, you have to, you have to use a very chemically induced uh, extraction method. Number Interesting. One. Okay. Number two, they are, they are now inorganic. When you fossilize something, you, it creates an inorganic structure. So the minerals that they take from there is inorganic. So that's why you have higher concentrations in these fulvic formulations. Uh, they have to take more. You have hmm. to take more because your body has, does not have the ability to absorb inorganic matter. That's the plant world. That's what they do. They take inorganic minerals from the soil and they transform it into organics. Right. Right. And, for, and so, so therefore we can absorb it. Exactly. So, right. so, so why take it from fossilization when you can actually take it from plants? That's for me is a no brainer. So yes. Why are we talking about shilajits or the, from the Himalayans? Cause they've been there for a long time and they've, they've been discovered a long time. We Canucks in Canada, you know, the, the mud man from Castleman, you know, I'm only been discovered now. I mean, it's like, I've been at this for 30 years. I've been shunned for 20. Uh, you know, he's a crazy madman. They used to be calling me madman, then become mudman. But in <laughs> essence, the, 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 the peat is an organic structure, and the fulvic is just as powerful in, in organic structure as it is in fossilization. All the other ones in, in New Mexico, all the American fulvics, they come from Leonardites. So what the humalite. Leonardites is a fossil, a fossilized fulvic. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's another form of, of rock formation, and they, they have to extract it with uh, chemicals. And so, so they have to, and they lose a lot of fulvic, by the way. I mean, you, you might get a lot of humic, but you lose a lot of fulvic. Hmm. And so it's very minute in organic structure. And so, so that's the, the biggest differentiation that we can talk about in fossilization and in peat bogs. And so the mineral content in organics uh, is pristine, it's pure, and it's, uh, it's, it's at a level where your body will absorb 100% of it. That's why wow. you know, we have five grams of fulvic in half a liter of water. You have your daily dosage of minerals at a PPM, which is uh, the same as your body. Your body will absorb what it needs as far as organic structure, right, when you eat. And it'll, and it'll just let go of the rest through your natural passages in your urine. So you'll never be overdosing of fulvic. You're just taking in what, it, what you need. It absorbs what it needs, and it lets go of the rest. When you talk about heavy metal, what happens in heavy metal? It goes into your cell. Yeah. It's hard to remove. So when you're, when you're absorbing fulvic that comes from Leonardites or from, from fossilization, you're not only taking in nutrients, but you're also taking in heavy metal. So mm. it's defeating the purpose. Interesting. Interesting. Now, um, one thing I just want to sort of interject here, and it's a little bit of a sidebar um, for our listeners, what they should know is that most people are, in fact, trace mineral deficient. And that's uh, on a very basic level why we actually need trace minerals, because, uh, again, modern farming and modern fertilization, et cetera, et cetera, has really stripped the soil of a lot of the trace elements. Um, actually, a lot of them, even the macro minerals, for that matter, a lot of them have really become depleted. Yeah, calcium, for example. Where, where, where do we get our calcium source right now? We get it from cows. Well, cows produce calcium from the organics they eat, and they actually produce uh, uh, calcium lactate, which is an organic. 
body, the human body does not have the ability to absorb that calcium. What we need is calcium nitrate, which comes from the soil. I mean, it's like, it's like you know, when you look at the industry we create, it's to create the industry, you know? And, and the saying of my father-in-law 30 years ago that, you know, milk from cows is to grow hooves and horns. That's it. I mean, nothing else. So, so it's the same thing for macro elements. We lack a, 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 a lot of calcium in our bodies. And, you know, we have an acid diet. We leach into our bone marrow. We become very acidic. And osteoporosis is a huge problem in Canada. But it's also because the calcium intake they were prescribed or they're taking is the wrong one. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and just to add to that as well, I think, you know, um, what I've come to realize is that on a cellular level, um, oftentimes around the cells, when we're deficient, you know, you go and get blood work done and your blood levels are always going to come out within range, right? You're never deficient from the doctor's perspective. But when you start getting into inside the cell, a lot of people are deficient. That's one. And then, of course, bones is where we store a lot of the minerals. The bones are deficient. So, you know, unfortunately, we only do bone mineral density testing when you're like in your 50s, 60s and beyond. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if we started doing that uh, younger, we would probably notice that this leaching of minerals is happening a lot earlier in life. Um, but, but one thing to point out here is that around the cells, you know, you've, you, when we're cellularly deficient, it's almost like the cells have put up a barrier. You know, they've, they've put up this block. And what I've noticed anyway is that the trace minerals help to metabolize the macro minerals. So, you know, this is why people taking a thousand milligrams of, you know, calcium carbonate or even calcium citrate for that matter, even if it's a good form, a lot of times um, iron is another one. You know, the reason why you can't get it into the cells, which is where all of your cellular or your body metabolism is happening, is because you lack the trace elements to actually get them inside. So you're sort of sitting with blood levels that are, that are within range. You're peeing out a lot of the other minerals, right? And your cells are starving and your bones are starving. So, so I think, you know, that from my side anyway is, is always been a very important point with regards to trace minerals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and then trace mineral content in Falvik, they're all there. There's none one missing. I mean, you can't. It, it comes from Mother Earth. It's very, very, you know, e equilibrium in, in, in that aspect of trace minerals. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, just on one final note on absorption here before we move on, um, you know, something that I think is also worth sharing is that we, uh, that, that fulvic and humic acids will increase um, nutrient absorption, right? Basically, they carry 60 times their weight of nutrients into the cells, and then they carry 60 times their weight of toxins out of the cell, right? Um, is that, is that, that's accurate? That is very accurate, yes. So, so, so let's talk about detoxification then, because I know that's another big um, area, uh, an exciting area with fulvic and humic acids. Um, so I'll sort of hand the mic over to you and, and let you go for it. Well, de detoxing should be, uh, should be something that everybody should look at every, day, every year. I mean, you should detox twice a year. I've always prone the detoxification process every change of season. You know, we used to tell people, you know, you change the oil in your car every 5,000 kilometers to maintain it. So we don't, we don't cleanse ourselves. I mean, we clog ourselves. We plug, we plug our digestive system. So, so when, when, we, when we eat more than we burn off and we are sedentary and we live in an environment that is toxic, it is obvious that our body becomes very chronic in, 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 stuff you get rid of <laughs> but the, the process of fulvic is that because of its uh, nanonization and it has the ability it's so minute that it has the ability to bring in like 60 times its weight to of of garbage out it's also because it has a negative ion uh current so it actually goes into the cell and binds heavy metal through the the negative ion and then it just ties all these heavy metals onto it, and it's and it's removed through the lymphatic system and in your sweat and your and your and your urine. Whereas, where when you're detoxing with folic, you also have to make sure that your bowel movement, your intestinal uh, uh, tract, is is well uh, triggered to eliminate waste. And uh, you know you got to look at your your digest your your diets, and so. Mm -hmm. combination of when you're detoxing you gotta you gotta take fulvic on a high level like three to four times a day 
but you also have to drink a lot of water, uh, use uh, natural laxatives like uh, cascara or senna plants, and you know use uh, collagogs like uh, dandelion and rosemary and blood purifiers, and mm-hmm. make sure that you're purifying all the system at the same time. Yeah. So we're, we're um, you know, you mentioned heavy metals and I know that's a, obviously a very hot topic for people, you know, because it's quite challenging to actually get heavy metals out. Um, is there any good literature on, on fulvic and humic acids detoxifying heavy metals from the body? Uh, it's a little tricky, right? It's a little tricky because we got to do research. And, and yeah. so, so, uh, we know that you know lead, PCBs, uh, phthalates, all stuff like that uh, is removed from detoxing with fulvic because we did uh, blood tests. But it's just you know when you're doing a 21 day cure, we wanna we wanna be able to look at a three month, six month process of all we can do. And, but, but I mean, uh, at, the, at the same time, I mean, if if you if you notice that in 21 days, I mean, it's not a far stretch to sort of say, well, look, if I was doing this day in day out uh, yeah. as a daily practice surely, um, you know, you might not be doing some crazy intensive detox, but you're almost detoxing on a daily basis, which I think is, is even more valuable, perhaps. Well, I, yeah, because we, we work on a, you know, a global, we work on a maintenance mode where everybody takes it. We're maintaining proper elimination of waste. Not that to say that some days you'll, you'll absorb a lot more than you eliminate, and that, that's when you, you got to really do a good detox once in a while. But you're at least working on the on the on the you know the building blocks of keeping somebody healthy by eliminating at least that waste during the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So another big benefit that I've come across that I would love to get your insight on is antioxidants. Um, you know, so the antioxidant properties of uh, fulvic, humic, and trace minerals. Well, oxidization is the aging process. So, you know, you cut an apple in two, put it on a counter, what happens? It oxidizes, it gets brown. Same thing happens on your skin. So, you know, in the aesthetic world, we're always looking for antioxidant products, anti-aging. Yeah. Same thing in, in the side, same thing in the side. So you're aging your, your digestive tract, your circulatory system, your lymphatic system. So the, the electrolyte properties of volvic is that it increases the oxygen levels up to 45 percent inside the body oh wow so crazy this is oxidization how does it do that well fulvic is made up of carbon oxygen and hydrogen so you know when when the, the fulvic hits your intestinal wall or 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 your your gastric juices or whatever it actually alkalizes your body, brings it up to a more oxygen-prone uh, body, more oxygen, less oxidization, less aging. So, you know, am I going to tell you it reduces the aging process? You're damn right. <laughs> and it's like um, there's a, a genetic company in the United States who was studying the effect of fulvic on the longevity genes. So if we take fulvic regularly over a six-month period, they actually increase the longevity genes. So you can even see you can even change the DNA of your body by taking fulvic because of that oxygen level increases in the DNA. Wow. So, that, that, that's insane. I mean, were they have just as a, as a follow up, um, are they also looking at telomeres? Did they look at telomeres by chance? Telomeres and longevity genes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So does this lengthen telomeres according to their studies? Yes. Wow. Yes. That's great. So it actually stops the aging process, right? So we're, we can say that it's reducing or, or you know, uh, maybe slowing it down. But hopefully one day we can tell people that fulvic actually stops the aging process. So. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, there's so many other variables that come into it, right? You can't be, um, you know, eating cheeseburgers and French fries uh, four times a day and, and slamming fulvic and humic acids back. Obviously, it's not going to work that way. Um, so, you know, just, just a disclaimer from uh, both of our sides that, uh, yeah. you know, good diet, lifestyle, exercise. Sunshine. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm just trying to think. So any other sort of big benefits that you can think of that, that people might be interested in hearing about? Well, we didn't talk about inflammation, but I can tell you inflammation yeah, is please, a big one. Please, <laughs> um, You know, inflammation is, is the, 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 the first alarm signal that the body tells you something's going on in your physical body. Uh, so I, I have an inflammation of the knee. I got inflammation of the, the cardiovascular system. I have an inflammation of my digestive system. There's something going on. So for me, 
uh, it was the first, the first, you know, warriors to find somebody that was something that was anti-inflammatory. So even the fulvic without, you know, knowing that you have inflammation or, you know, it creeps up on you. So you live with that inflammatory purpose. You know, you have a headache all the time. You have mm. uh, aches and pains in the morning. You have, you know, that really helps because it not only works on symptomatic because that's the symptom, but it works on the foundational, on, on the building blocks because it has an adaptogen. So it actually uh, helps, you know, anybody that, you know, doesn't know about fulvic and they have inflammation and it causes pain they can start taking folate. They can start eventually taking a mud bath and, they, and that is reduced. And, and then the, that's symptomatic. So I think that folate is even good for symptoms. Hmm, okay. Yeah. So more acute, acute type of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so instead of thinking of taking Tylenols or Advils or any, you know, drug ammunition, start taking folate. Now it's not a quick fix. It's not something like when you take a Tylenol in a half an hour, it's gone. But, but eventually we'll work on, on the, the receptors uh, uh, of the, you know, the nerve endings. Um, and uh, it, it really, really will work on a reduction of inflammation. In, in, and in, at the same time, you get less, less pain. So inflammation uh, is another big, big subject on folic. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, inflammation, I mean, such a, a, a major driving force behind pretty well all chronic degenerative disease. I mean, I think uh, most people agree on that. Uh, also known as the silent killer. Um, yeah. You know, so, you know, obviously, overt pain is acute inflammation, which can be chronic as well. So now you've got chronic pain, but you're aware of it. But there's, of course, that sort of real um, sinister type of chronic inflammation where you don't even know it's happening until boom, you know, one day you get diagnosed with something. Um, you know, uh, w without even feeling it uh, in a yeah. sense. So, yeah. Um, wow. So, I mean, this has really been a fascinating conversation. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was looking forward to having you on the show because I know that we both sort of, um, you a lot more than myself, but both really been into this uh, subject for a long time. And it's interesting, you know, the more I talk to people about the subject, they get quite excited because I feel like it's something that's really easy to do but offers such a wide array of benefits, if, if that makes sense. You know, because I think one of the biggest challenges we have these days is there's just so much information coming at you all the time. And there's the latest wonder product here or the latest miracle cure or whatever. And I think, you know, what I... Yeah, what what I what I love about this is is that it's it's actually something that your body is designed by nature to actually have on a daily basis. It's not yeah. something that, you know, we've sort of put together and formulated or guessing what you need. It's really saying like, this is what your body is designed to operate on. And, and yeah. because we've lost it in the farming system and because we're not getting it in the food supply, we are, I think that most people would agree we're at a net deficit for, for the majority of people. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I was always, you know, and I, I'm the formulator. I'm not the formulator. I'm just a messenger. I think I was brought to this earth to, to, to bring the message of Mother Earth. It really is because I, I haven't formulated anything. It just comes to me and says, okay, this, this is what you need to do. You start researching. Oh, that's great. Uh, formulation is like adding, adding essential oils and making it nice and pretty. But, you know, in essence, the pristine fulvic mud that comes from there is, is the essential that you need for your body. And so yeah. – Hundred um, percent. Something that just came to mind, and perhaps because uh, I know again this is also a hot button topic. Um, just before we wrap up, uh, pathogens. So, so fulvic and humic acids against things like uh, bacteria, viruses, yeasts, um, parasites, and so on. Yeah. Any information there? So, so uh, it's antibacterial. Uh, you know, the decomposing process, there's good bacteria and bad bacteria. When I was in the, extracting the peat and, you know, and putting it in baths, we had to make sure that we had no staphylococcus and streptococcus and E. coli in the mud, right? Yeah. But you still had this, the good bacteria, which is the decomposing process. So there is good bacteria in the peat. And so it actually helps the intestinal flora. So, uh, you know, in this uh, form of folate that we extract, there's no more bacteria because, you know, we got rid of the water, we got rid of everything. But uh, you're still helping the intestinal flora because, it, you know, it, it's, it has a, uh, the availability to uh, create your body into 
an, an alkaline state. But if we take the actual peat from the peat bog and we leave the peat, it's very antibacterial also. And so when you go to Nate Harting, they used to do uh, uh, um, a more drink. So it was, and then we used to do that. You know, we actually just peat in water and drink it, or you put it in muffins or cake and you eat it. Uh, it really helps for the intestinal flora. It has probiotics and, you know, uh, it, it, it just helps the intestinal flora. Yeah. And I would think as well, I mean, just, just from my own experience anyway, um, the way I look at this is always, it's such a powerful adjunct, um, you know, or an add-on that can really be used in any type of program, right? So, you know, let's, for example, say you are doing a hyper-targeted parasite protocol on, on, a, on a client or patient um, or candida cleansing or whatever it is, right? Actually using it together with some of the more concentrated herbal antimicrobials and so on um, is, is very, very useful, it's useful because you, now you're using the adaptogen uh, uh, properties of fulvic. So you're, 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 giving them, you're giving the other agents building blocks. You're strengthening it. So that's why any, any type of treatment, fulvic should always be incorporated. Mm. Awesome. Well, um, I know our time is sort of running out here, and I think we've covered a lot of ground in just under an hour. So uh, th thanks for coming on the show, Mark. I really appreciate it. And it's been quite an enlightening discussion, I got to say. And I think for a lot of folks listening, um, they probably learned a ton off this episode uh, that they probably never knew about before. So that's, that's fantastic. Been my pleasure, and of course, you know, an hour goes by really fast when I start talking about my own passion. So, we can talk about it another hour if you want one day. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, um, so those of you listening today as well, um, you know, thanks for tuning in. As always, uh, I hope that you did enjoy today's episode. Um, check out the show notes because I'm going to be putting some links uh, to where you can find out more um, with what Mark is up to and uh, some of the products um, that he's involved with. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that, Mark. Any final words from your side? Just start consuming fulvic and, and experience the effect of fulvic on your own. And you'll, you'll be amazed. It's not just me saying it, you know, make the experiment your own. Yeah. Well, and also from a preventative, you know, so even for those folks who are listening, who are just looking to maintain a higher level of health that you already have, you know, I, th I think that uh, I've always believed this long before you and I even met that fulvic and humic acids are really core foundational um, elements that we should be taking in on a daily basis. hundred uh, percent. Yeah. So, Absolutely. all right, everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Mark, thanks for coming on the show. And as always, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider uh, leaving us a review, uh, subscribing to the show and sharing this with your friends, family or community. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at that. And you have a beautiful day wherever you are. <laughs>